Hi, this is Julian for Production Expert. In this video, I'm going to show how to make two specialist reverbs using stock plugins. I happen to be using Pro Tools in this example, but uh, you'll have equivalent plugins in whichever DAW you use, so this isn't Pro Tools specific. The first one I'm going to show you how to do is a shimmer reverb. You've probably heard of these. Um, here in this pluck delay line, should take your breath away. I have you a shimmer reverb set up. I'll just the knock it out so you can hear without. But you're the one love should take your breath away. But you I get lost. And here it is with I can't find the words to say. But you're the one. So what's going on? Well, I mean, very often these are used with kind of like slow attack kind of sounds, and it builds and makes kind of kind of sort of symphonic sound. In this case, using it on a pluck is is kind of different, but I think it's really nice. The way it works is like this. What I've got is I've got on this pluck delay sound. I've got, uh, there is actually a delay on there. So if I turn that off, we'll hear it without. I'll just solo that up. And we'll just hear the dry sound. So what's going on? What we've got is we've got a send, this send here which is sending that expand patch out to this return, this shimmer reverb return. And there it meets first a channel strip. All this is doing is it's doing some compression. Just because compression is levelling out the level and it's, it's helping keep the effects more audible more of the time. It'll work without. But what it won't work without is this. This is a pitch shift plugin, which is shifting the signal that's been sent to the reverb before it hits the reverb. It pitches it up by an octave. And then it hits a reverb. In this case, I'm just using a long hall reverb from Dverb. So you can hear the difference. What I'll do is I'll, I'll bypass the pitch. And here it is with the pitch shift in. Now, this is different from just pitch shifting the whole thing up an octave because it's only the reverb that's pitch shifted up. And, and that's, that's at the core of what this thing does. There's loads of possibilities of things, other things that you can do to it to make it better for the purpose you're using. For example, lots of people like to use some modulation on it. That can sound lovely. But it's up to you. Do it however you want to, but if it's got this pitch shifted element to it, then it gives it that shimmer so the reverb is at a different pitch from the sound that it's reverberant of. Okay, next one is gated reverb. This was all over the 80s. So let's jump back in over here. We'll go to a different section. We'll come over here. And I've got some gated reverb happening on the snare. Same arrangement as before off a send. And it's coming to this return. Possibly don't need the vocals. I'll turn it up a bit so you can hear what's going on. And what's going on is... We've got this very dense, very full reverb, but it just stops. And that's the gated element of a gated reverb. Just to find the difference here, what I'll do is I'll just bypass this channel strip here. And what we've got now is we've just got a really long reverb. This reverb's coming from Revibe. In this case, I'm using it just because it sounded nicer. I started with Dverb and that wasn't really quite working, but it's still a it's still a stock plugin, or at least it's a plugin that's included for most people with Pro Tools. But whatever your best reverb is in your DAW, use that and you probably won't go far wrong. Then the really important part is it hits a gate hence gated reverb. And you need to set this up very carefully. There are gated reverb presets in a lot of reverb plugins, but the nice thing about doing it manually is it gives you full control over everything and you can set it up exactly how you want it to be. It can take a little longer that way, but you know, if you're in a hurry, use a preset. In this case, what I'm doing is I've got the, uh, uh, the expander gate set up as a gate so that it turns everything off completely gone. 
How quickly that happens is dependent on the release. So you can make it turn off very sharply or you can make it fade out more gradually by changing the release time. Attack time doesn't really make so much difference. But something that can happen is that it can start to become difficult to control. The way I like to do it is instead of using the threshold and the de natural decay of the reverb and the threshold relative to that to decide when it gates, I like to do it slightly differently using the hold control. I'll show you what I mean. If I turn this off... And that's just based on where the threshold is. If I turn this up, it'll get shorter. But what I can do is I can set it very high so it's performing consistently and reliably. And then if I want it to go on for longer, just change the whole time, which just opens the gate for a minimum amount of time. Something else that can happen is you might find that it chatters when it releases. If I set this up right, here's a little at the end. That's just a side effect of gates. But if you've got this control, hysteresis, then that can help it. Won't go into exactly what it does now, but it does make that go away. I'll pull that back a little and bring the rest of the track back in. So there we have two specialist reverbs that are set up just using stock plugins that you've got available in any DAW you choose to use. So hope you found something useful in that. <laughs>